Hey everybody and welcome to the PC Gamer Show. My name is Tom Marks, assistant editor here at PC Gamer and slightly getting over a cold, mm. but that's all right. I'm here with James Davenport, our associate editor. How you doing, James? Uh, average. Average? Yeah. That's a very Just neutral... Toy I mean, it's not bad, it's not good. Toy Story 2 was oh, okay. <laughs> if anybody knows... Dimitri Martin. Anyway, and we're also here with special guest Will Chesney, video producer here at Future Productions or Future Hello. US. Future Studios. There we go. I think we're called. Um, but I didn't know you were still getting over a cold or I wouldn't be in this tiny room. Yeah. With you right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no air circulation. We're in a giant petri dish. No, right but the, the good thing is, remember, this room gets so hot that any sort of living matter would just die. die. That's true. Yeah, That's it'll true. just burn off. Yeah. So we'll be okay great. by the I end of the so. show. And speaking of, we've got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about last week, or the week before last, I got to play XCOM 2, mm -hmm. and I fell in love with it very quickly, and we'll be talking about my hands-on time with that. We're going to be talking about how Steam VR was delayed, and Oculus Rift alternatively got a bundled game that will come with it. Uh, we're going to be talking about Tribes Ascend getting its first patch in two years, Woo. finally, officially gets this patch. And we'll also be talking about <clears throat> CSGO's newest patch, which was its holiday update that added a new gun and kind oh, of God. screwed with some things. So we'll be talking about that. And plus, of course, we'll be taking your lovely questions from Twitch chat as well. But first, let's start off in a... What are you guys playing lately? James, what have you been playing, man? Oh, boy. I played a PC-ass PC game this weekend. <laughs> what does uh, that even mean? <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> I played, I finally, uh, well, we're coming up on the end of the year, and I wanted to feel as if I had played everything I should have, uh, which is it's an impossible task. But uh, I hopped into StarCraft II. Oh. Um, ah. The campaign, I'll never be good at multiplayer. I'll just, I won't. And that's okay. Yeah, um. But I, I played uh, uh, the original campaign as a kid and really, really liked it, even though I probably, I think Wes and I were talking, uh, when we were kids playing RTS games, I don't know if you guys did this, but uh, we would always hit a point where my tiny child brain just couldn't comprehend the tactics involved, and I would just, you know, cheat. Um, <laughs> and it was fun. It was like kind of like uh, just throwing giant armies at each other. Yeah. It, was, it was interesting enough as a kid. I remember uh, all the codes for Warcraft. Too. Oh, yeah. yeah, good stuff. It, it is a good day. Endless to die. fun. Endless yeah. fun. Oh, I forgot uh, about those. Yeah. I, the the codes I have stuck in my head are the Sims codes, like Motherload and Rosebud. Oh, okay. oh like the, wow! Yeah. All oh, this came back to me. <laughs> I miss like, uh, cheats in games. I really, really do. do. That's why I like it's Fallout Four is kind yeah, of fun. Yeah, you get console that. controls. Yeah. It's kind of like cheats. You can dink around. But, but I yeah. wish they would call them cheats. Like I know right. that's like such a subtle difference, but I wish that they would like <laughs> just wouldn't have told anybody that the console commands were in Fallout and like in order to spawn something, it wasn't just like spawn entity blank. If I wish you had to be like type in some password like right. The like, Institute finds you, and then it spawns, like, a, a thing or something like that. Like, I don't know. It's such a subtle difference, but it's, it harkens back to the ye olden days, right? Yeah. It does. And I miss it. Um, so <laughs> it, was, it, it was nice in some sense to go back to StarCraft II. I had not finished Heart of the Swarm, even though I thought I did. Um, <laughs> so, like, everything was different at the beginning yeah, of the Yeah, like, I was wait. like, whoa! Um, did I did what? I yeah. finished uh, Wings of Liberty back when it came out, what, 2011? 20, I don't even remember. Um, and I liked it. I just think playing as Terran is boring. Uh, playing as Zerg, however, is great. It's a lot of fun. The campaign uh, basically uh, empowers you to, in, in every way, to play as the Zerg. Like, you're always... You, you can uh, morph um, certain units uh, based on missions you do. So you can choose a genetic strain that gives them a certain power-up and so on. Um, and playing as them is fun because it's all about, like, making a bunch of units very quickly. Uh, so you right. can just, like, have a massive, writhing, disgusting army and just, you know, d uh, tear apart a base and keep replenishing your zerglings. And it's a lot of fun. Story is just dumb. <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys do you guys know anything about the story in StarCraft? I know all about the original StarCraft story. It's like right. a it's like yeah. a space opera. It's like supposed to be melodramatic. Right? Uh, it's sure it's melodramatic, <laughs> but the writing it feels like someone just like uh, made some kind of batch file or code that pulls from uh, just cliched lines from every single space opera out there. <laughs> it's like nothing anything uh, uh, nothing a character says feels 
original or interesting. Uh, it's all just like pull quote nonsense. Whatever. Who cares? Um, it's pretty and fun. And then I hopped into the beginning of, um, geez, Legacy of the Void, which is the Protoss right. campaign, the new one that came out this year, the final in StarCraft II trilogy. Uh, and that was fun. I mean, I'm only in the beginning, but uh, going from Zerg to Protoss is kind of hard because Protoss yeah, are... It's a pretty big swing. Yeah, they, 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 they pl- they, the base building and unit generation goes a bit slower. Um, and they're a bit more technical, and I'm a sloppy RTS player. I'm not good at them, so it's been a little harder, but, and, and the story is just, ugh. It's, really? <laughs> See, I heard, I heard that this was actually the best one of the three, kind of I story-wise, mean, and even just campaign in general-wise. I'm not that far into it, so I can't really judge, but it's, I mean, it's so hard to parse because all the Protoss are named something really... Just, just weird. They have just weird <laughs> names. Um, it's just a bunch of random syllables thrown together. I uh, think you're a racist. I think you <laughs> are oh racist God. against Damn. Protoss. Damn. Uh, they are. They, sure. they have <laughs> Artanis, Zeratul. Yeah. Yeah. They have real well, names. Then, well, there, yeah, those kinds of names, and then it's just like all at once thrown at you. It's like, wait, who was the <laughs> thing? And they all look exact. Oh, geez, I do sound like a racist. Whoa, oh, no. whoa, oh, no. whoa. Oh, no. yeah, That's a good sentence to just cut off. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to. that. Oh, geez, I, I'm embarrassed now. But. A toss hater. It's cool. It's would a good you, game. Would you say that you don't like those people? <laughs> I'm gonna lose my job. Yeah. Uh, no, it's okay. It's okay. But the campaign's been fun, uh, and I think uh, it, fe- it made me think that um, I don't. What RTS games are out there anymore? It's like been a PC staple since PC gaming um, started. But yeah. I feel yeah, like the, the and this is and this is the new one is important because it's like the end of the story that they started yeah. in what, 1998, 1999. Oh, way back when. 1998, yeah. Um, so and even to a certain extent, it's the end of the story they started in 2010, like it, yeah. w- with the first StarCraft two. So it's this weird. It, even even by the own its own game, it's five years long that they're ending. Yeah, it's crazy, um, and it just made me think that. I don't know if we're seeing as many RTS games on PC anymore, and I'm wondering if that's because uh, MOBAs have kind of, like, washed over that kind of gameplay. Not, like, replaced it entirely, but uh, when people see that isometric, uh, you know, perspective and they think about managing uh, units, it's kind of shifted, and you can see that in RTS gameplay over time, like, shifted to hero control, because in the campaign in StarCraft II, there are heroes and everything, and there are moments where it feels like uh, uh, a MOBA sometimes, too. Warcraft kind of, 3, definitely. Yeah, yeah, Warcraft yeah. 3. So I'm just I mean, that's where the MOBA was right, invented, exactly. was in the yeah. Warcraft 3 level editor. And uh, it just made me wonder what's going to happen to RTS games going forward, and I don't really know the answer to that, but I am I mean, super curious what I you feel like think. Blizzard will... You know, stay on top of it. Sure. I, you know, I, they're going to keep updating, you know, Legacy of the Void for a long time, I'm mm-hmm. sure, mm-hmm. and then they'll have something else. Because I, I feel like part of the reason we don't see any others is just Blizzard has just done it. I mean, if you're going to competitively play an RTS, yeah. Yeah. that's the only one. Um, yeah, it's true. And there, we've seen other RTSs, and we've talked about this on the show a little bit before, but we've seen other RTSs like Grey Goo, Grey Goo. and stuff like that mm, yeah, do, yeah. do well in recent years. But I don't. I think the weird thing is you start having to hold them to the same standard of StarCraft, and no game, no RTS at least, will <clears> ever <throat> hit StarCraft. No RTS right. will ever be able to live up to the StarCraft like what StarCraft did. Other games outside of that genre will through esports, but StarCraft just became this this thing. It is not, you know, yeah. it's not almost almost completely unrelated to the gameplay now. Right. Is what StarCraft has become, you know, it's like it's yeah. just it's an entity. It is a a part of PC gaming. Yeah, I just hope going forward that we still see stuff like Company Heroes and uh maybe more Warhammer RTS games happen because um, yeah. I really like those, and I just I don't think the genre is dying or anything. I just think it's kind of it's, it's taken a bit of a break as you know 
it assesses itself yeah. <laughs> because it's a sentient thing, I guess. Um, one last thing I played uh, briefly was uh, last week I met up with some Crytek people and played the their new VR game for Oculus on the Oculus platform uh, called The Climb. Cool. And we have a preview up on the site. It's a, it's a rock climbing game, which it, it's too, like on paper, if you told me Crytek's making a rock climbing game, <laughs> I would just, what? I, what? <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, what you do is, well, you... Do you climb rocks? You climb rocks, <laughs> you climb rocks. Um, and it's 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 done in locales that are like loose approximations of real locations. So this easy mode was in Southeast Asia, and you start off like on a platform. You're looking at a rock wall, and you kind of see little notches in the rock that kind of uh, pepper the cliffside. And it looks like there's a whole bunch of different routes you can choose. Um, in the demo I played, I had to move my hands by looking, which was kind of mm. weird at first. And I was holding an Xbox controller, so I would look my hand would kind of like, if it was wi within um, grabbing distance of a notch, would kind of snap to it. It wouldn't grab it until I pulled one of the triggers, the right mm. or left trigger. Gotcha. And it's kind of like a, you know, you do that, you pull and release and look up. So I might be holding something with my left hand, left trigger, release on the right trigger, look up, my left hand stays in the same spot, and my right hand's, you know. Right. So it's kind of this juggling act, which is really awkward at first. Um, you think they would have demoed it with touch controllers, especially because they say they're supporting touch. Uh, but I also understand that touch is not coming out um, uh, during the launch window for Oculus, so maybe they were like, oh, maybe we shouldn't advertise it as this if... Right, if it's not going to be available yeah. right away. Um, how, how was it? I mean, did, did it feel, did you feel any vertigo or anything? That's like the thing. Hanging uh, up there on the rock wall? It's kind of crazy. Uh, I'm not, like, super versed in VR. I've tried some demos, and I've done a few games, like a drift, and um, it's, it's reached a, a point where, yeah, I mean, like, I do feel a sense of, of place, and I, I'm scared of heights, so, like, uh, when you're climbing, you're just looking at a rock wall. You forget, as you do in VR, too, that you can look around. Right. And there's a moment I had, I remember, because I'm climbing. I'm like, oh, this, isn't, this isn't so bad. And uh, I look down, and I just stomach dropped. as if, <laughs> And I'm standing there in this room uh, with, like, Jason Rubin uh, at Oculus, Oculus Studios and, like, some of the developers. And my knees buckle, and I go, oh, yeah, shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty embarrassing. But uh, uh, it speaks to the power of that. Yeah, I, I bet they were pumped. That yeah, that was yeah. The action, actually. I yeah, guess. and uh, you know, as far as I mean, there and and the game kind of uh, changes a bit further from that. You're climbing things, and you have to actually like reach and lean mm. your body to make certain grabs. Oh, to like get in view. Of yeah, the yeah. To like, because there will be a rock face that kind of curves, right? Right. And you'll have to, like, lean your body around. And they didn't have to tell me to do that, which was this That's really cool. cool, messed up moment. <laughs> I, I talk about VR as if it's this abomination. It sort of is, and a, be a beautiful abomination. It makes you feel terrible things you yeah, don't want to feel. Yeah, <laughs> your brain is... Um, but, yeah, that was really cool. Uh, there were moments where you had to switch hands. So you'd have to position one hand above the other and then, like, change triggers real quick. Oh, yeah. And you like risk falling, my heart would leap during those moments. Sometimes there were moments where you'd have to, you can jump in this game, you just press A or something, and you'd position yourself, you'd kind of reach out as far as you could while holding on with one hand, and then press A, and your character would leap. Right. Which would then like, also, I would close my eyes every time, I'm, uh, just on instinct, uh, huh. and grab the ledge on the other side. So it's this really simple... Uh, gameplay mechanic, but made very complex and thrilling with the addition of VR. It's something I probably would not give a damn about if it was, uh, you know, just, just on a flat screen, um, you know, uh, with a motion or gyroscopic controller or something. Right. It would be pretty boring. But uh, in in the CryEngine, which is they've optimized like mad for VR, um, and they're really excited about that. They kind of went off on this tangent about how hardware manufacturers and uh, graphics engines are all, like, you know, 
they're finally like uh, constrained and forcing themselves to become as optimized as possible because VR needs like 90 frames per second or higher to be uh, to immersive. Avoid, yeah, or to avoid making you throw up. Oh, or that, <laughs> which is so, I yeah. guess that's a level yeah. of immersion. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of cool. excitement surrounding this, and it's a really simple game. They hope a lot of people will be able to play. I don't know if it's like going to be. They kind of compared it to. They didn't compare it to, but they were. Their language was, "We want everyone to be able to play this. We want it to be accessible." And I'm like thinking about my mom playing this game. I'm thinking about her like dropping to the floor like in, in panic, <laughs> and, and I'm like, "Well, I don't know if this is going to be like the Wii Sports." per se, of right. VR. But I certainly think it'll be, it has potential to be something that maybe someone who's like, eh, video games, whatever, like, hops into and is like, okay, this is, like, thrilling and interesting and cool. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. and something that's really interesting that that is attractive to me about it is what you're describing is something, as you said, that would be boring on a flat screen. So it's like, okay, we have VR, what can we do with it that we can't do? Mm -hmm. You know, whereas, you know, some games are just going to basically be the same as their flat screen equivalent, yeah. just yeah. you can look around a little, you know? But actually doing something that can only be done in this new art yeah. form, that's really it's cool. It's pretty crazy. Um, I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, so That's very cool. And we can talk more a little bit about that later when we're talking about VR yeah, sure. as well. Right. Um, but... I'm curious, Will, you've never been on the show before. No, never. You've been behind the camera a few times. Yep. But now I finally get to ask you this question. What have you been playing recently? <laughs> so there's an obvious answer yes, that which, I'll hold off on. But there's an obvious <laughs> answer for me. Well, you know. And maybe James and no one else. Because I, know, I, get up here every, I get up here every week and I say Overwatch. And, yeah. you know, Tyler gets up here every week and says Rocket League. And Tim gets up here every week and says Hearthstone. And right. we've got our standards. But nobody <laughs> knows your standard yet. <laughs> nobody knows what you're known for. Well, I have been playing some Blizzard games recently. I'll start with that. So okay. I've been playing, playing some Hearthstone, like you just said. I just made a, a total gimmick deck the other day, um, an Astral Communion deck, um, which, you know, my win rate is terrible with, but it's super fun when I pull it off. I suddenly, on turn, you know, two or three, have ten mana and a deck full of giant creatures. So that's yeah. super fun. Um, also playing a lot of Heroes of the Storm. Um, I've been playing pretty consistently that uh, for months now, which is just, you know, keep coming back to it. It's a good, uh, good game to play with friends. Um, but the my go-to game that I realized recently I have almost 2,000 hours in <laughs> um, is Planetside 2. Just, And, and yeah. how, like, that is not a thing that you will hear <laughs> often. Yeah. No well, offense, I hear no it a lot because of the people I play with. But right. right. That's, like, I, have, you know. I mean no offense to Planetside 2 or the people who enjoy that game because I, I have never personally played it, but right. if it's fun, it's fun. You know, that's yep. great. Um, yeah. They, SOE makes, or Daybreak, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, now they're Daybreak. I, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'm, what is it, 2015 still? Yeah. God. <laughs> um, SOE. Yeah, Daybreak, Daybreak. They put a lot of love into the games they make, and they support them for a while. And so, so yeah. you, how long have you been playing Planetside Two? Um, for two thousand hours, you said. Yeah. So I, I think it's been about three years, um, maybe two and three quarters. You know, um, and you know, I've gone through phases. You know, uh, when I first started playing it, I played it like mad for a couple months, and then kind of stopped for six or seven months, and then got back into it, and kind of haven't stopped. Um, like Fallout 4 just came out, stopped for like a week to play Fallout 4, and then it was like, well, I kind of prefer sniping in Planet <laughs> Side. It's just a little more, you know, so I ended up back in that. Um, and I think what's so compelling is just how massive a first person shooter it is. I mean, you, both in terms of how many players there are, I mean, you can have 2,000 players on a map, um, but also geographically. So, Unlike some other shooter games like Overwatch, um, in Planet Side you can always flank. There's, there's just you can just keep outflanking and outflanking. So you get these crazy battle lines that are just really exciting. Um, and that's because it's basically like for the for those of you who don't know yeah. what Planet Side Two is, it's basically like an MMO, right? Where kind of where like you, it's a giant open world. Yeah, um, and you attack covered in like, bases. Right, you attack yeah. these bases that certain factions control, and then right. your faction tries to take control back for. 
Right, and you you can spawn at the bases, and you can spawn at sort of mobile uh, spawn stations. Um, but basically, those bases act like uh, matchmaking um, lobbies in, like, say, Battlefield or something like that. You know, so so you might have like twenty four people versus twenty four people at one of these bases, but unlike one of these other games you can just leave that base and walk somewhere else or drive somewhere <laughs> else or fly somewhere else or have, like, a huge force that's taking one base, finish taking it, and then just move over to yours. So suddenly, you know, it's 100 versus 100 or, you know, 300 versus 300 are in this one tiny base. So it's pretty pretty exciting. Great time for grenades. <laughs> so. Well, cool. Um, yeah, so much fun. And we can talk also about... Planet side, I want <clears throat> to, excuse me, talk about that uh, along with when we're talking about tribes later. So that'll mm-hmm. lead into that because they are semi similar ish, not uh, clo- not in play style, but in like I feel like they appeal I mean, to similar free audiences. To play first person shooters. Um, they both got a big uh, a, uh, focus on like a big map. Yeah. I feel like, and yeah. that, that's kind of why I categorize them similarly. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm probably really wrong about that, but that's okay. I can I can see the similarities. I can see the differences as well, but you know. So my mother wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Bless her, <laughs> bless her heart. But as she falls from a rock face playing yeah, a VR yeah. game, I personally, like I said last week, the Overwatch beta has closed mm-hmm. for the winter and the holidays, and I'm very sad about that, but I picked up Rainbow Six Siege, uh, mostly on your glowing recommendation, James. I like it a lot. Um, and I've, I've been really enjoying it. I've been playing it with Evan Lottie, our former mm-hmm. editor-in-chief, and he's been, as we used to call it, tax, tactics dad. <laughs> like, <laughs> basically just teaching me yeah. and everyone in the lobby how to play this game while he's absurdly title. good at that Bramman. game. Yeah, yeah tactics, tactics dad. dad. He's, yeah. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> I think it fits. Um, and we've been playing a little bit, and he was showing me the ropes, and I'm, I was really, really enjoying it. I I was surprised with how much I was enjoying it. Um it's it's compelling. It's very very fun, and we've talked about, but we've talked about Rainbow Six Siege enough. What I want to do is I want to move on to XCOM Two, um, because that was really like what I played recently that I wanted to talk about. And yeah. I played XCOM Two at the Two K offices, coming on two weeks ago now, but I wasn't allowed to talk about it until <laughs> Thursday. Um, so. XCOM 2, for those of you who don't know XCOM 1, enemy, uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown, what are you doing? Go play it. Um, that's yeah. kind of the only, <laughs> for real, for real. It's, it's kind amazing. of Phenomenal the only way game. I can put it. Yeah. It's this it's, it's this strategy, turn-based, squad-based game where if one of your soldiers dies, then they're dead permanently. Yeah. And XCOM 2, <clears throat> the best way I can describe it, and I said this in my write-up about it last week, is or in the video I did about it last week, is it is XCOM Enemy Unknown but better. It is literally the same game, but they made every single part of it just better in every way, right? Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's prettier by a significant margin. Or not maybe not significant, but like it's noticeably more attractive of a game. Right. The combat is cooler. The classes are more nuanced. The talents you pick are more nuanced. The customization of characters is ridiculously deep now instead Uh-oh. of before. The um yeah right like yeah. and I asked them about that too. I was like, why would you want to spend like an hour customizing each of your soldiers when they're just gonna die in the next mission yeah. and you're gonna lose them? Well, I when I first played XCOM, I named it after loved ones, which was a huge mistake. And now that I know I can make them look closer to the people I love, the, uh, yeah, <laughs> the faces. Whoops. There's not much yeah. face customization. Uh, um, still. But it was so, still like six or eight different faces, but it was I think the faces were, themselves were preset. Yeah, I think we're there not were talking like Fallout. Five, yeah, yeah you're not, it's yeah. not it's not like little intricacies like that. But I think there are like five races you choose from, okay. and the race is like not skin color. It's like uh, like facial structure basically, mm-hmm. and then on top of that, you choose like six of one between one of six like preset faces within that like racial thing. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. It, so, so there's still there's, talking like there's still a lot of twenty options. or thirty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's still a lot of options. Plus, then you can set the mood of each soldier, so you can make <laughs> them like a really serious or they're really amazing. happy-go-lucky, and that changes their facial expression. Okay. So they look a little different with that too. Oh, jeez. Just cool. Um, yeah, it's just it, it's it's very cool, and and the thing I'm actually really excited about, and I was 
going to tell everyone about this, but it doesn't come out until February, um, is you can save a character to a character pool. We knew about oh, cool. this a while right, ago. Right. You can design a character, you can customize it really in depth, and then you can save that character's look and like attitude or whatever to a character pool and upload it and export it. So conceivably what you could do is start XCOM 2 at the same time as like five or six friends everybody makes one character and then you all upload them to each other and so you all have identical squads that's and then kind of you, a cool idea. Then you'd yeah. see, like, who would last the longest and that sort of stuff, who yeah. would die we, and who's Yeah, game. we got to have an office squad. Yeah. Thinking. That would be fun. I, yeah. think it'd be, I think it'd be really cool. Yeah. And you can also, like, yeah. sh- you could share your squad with people, That'd which I great. think is fun. That's awesome. So, um, and then I assume you can, if you start a new game, reload your character from well, that pool. you can, I, th- I believe... Like, if it's a saved custom... I believe what the reloaded thing is is entirely aesthetic... Right? right, so you could save a character that you love a lot and then load yeah. it into a new game, and it wouldn't have all of the stats and then all not that stats, stuff, but, but it would yeah. look the same. So what what I'll do is just every time one of my soldiers dies, I just take one of my other soldiers and make them look like that soldier. It's like it's like the the families that when their dog dies, <laughs> they, they clone name, it. They, no, they just get a new dog and name it the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I there was want, some like. like I want to make everyone in white armor and like have helmets and just make a stormtrooper like clone army. <laughs> yeah. Make them all identical. That'd be cool. Yeah, Not there's a lot of ways to play. Yeah. And I mean, people will eventually mod that in because the modding support. I didn't realize this until I went to 2K. They're making literally all or nearly all of the content in the game publicly available. All of the really? models, all of the textures, all of yeah. the coding and scripting for that the game. That is amazing. All of the sound and audio files. Who They're does just, that? 2K, apparently, or, or Fire Axis. It's so even. smart. It's so Firaxis, smart. Yeah, Firaxis is literally what they said. Jake Solomon, the, the director of the game, said to me, he was like, we looked at the Long War mod, which was this great, great mod for the original XCOM, XCOM Enemy Unknown, um, that kind of, uh, it was a complete total conversion mod. Right. And he was like, we looked at what they had to do, and they had to, like, reverse engineer certain files, like mm-hmm. scripts and stuff like that, to be able to get these things and mod the game the way they did. And he was like, we felt bad that they had <laughs> to do that, yeah. and we just want to make it easier this time. Yeah. We want to make we want to see total conversion mods like that common. That's yeah. going to extend the life of that game. Yeah, Forever. I was going to say it'll yeah. give it major, major legs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's already push it out. It's already got this emphasis on replayability yeah. because I was talking um, I was talking with Maxwell from Games Radar who also went to 2K for this demo. Um, and we were talking about the one mission we had well, we all got to do like the same first two tutorial missions and then like a random mission and a black site mission. And the black site mission is like a story mission, basically. And the random mission was hack an advent computer. And the advents are these aliens. Mm-hmm. And that that advent computer mission, was that was all the description you got. It was in West India, I think, and it's hack an advent computer. And everything else of like the layout and the, the looks and the time of day and the weather and all that is randomly generated every hmm. time you play a map. So I was talking about we were talking about this mission, and we had a similar enough experience playing it that we could be like, oh, yeah, when we were pushing up to the building or whatever. And then he was like, yeah, but my computer was in the back of the church, and so I had to, like, storm through one of the windows on the side of the church. And I was like, what church are you talking about? <laughs> and he was like, the, like wait a sec. It, it was in the back room of that church. And I was like, mine was in a gas station. Like, what <laughs> did I bl- blew up? Which I blew yeah. up, yeah. So nice. I was like, I literally looked at him and I was like, did I blow up a church and not realize it? <laughs> like, am I a terrible person? But no, we just had, like, vastly different experiences of the same, like, the same mission. Hmm, and That's very cool. It's part of that replayability. I'm... I'm really excited for it. Basically, I, I came away from that just being like, I want to play XCOM 2 right now. Like, I just want to keep playing that How game. How long do we have to wait now? February. February. Yeah, that's not that bad. That is soon. Yeah. It's really soon. Oh, I mean, considering man. it was supposed so, to come out in November. Yeah, we like, get to watch Star Wars coming up, and then just in a, another couple months, then we'll be able to kind of live off of that game. for a little while. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It'll get sus- to, um, sustain us. Yeah, yeah. Sustain us. And then we get to kind of live <laughs> off that for a little while, and then Game of Thrones comes, what, in April? Well, And, and then, then Overwatch in the summer. Yeah. So we're... <laughs> 2016 set. You're good. Man, yeah. Yeah. your like your high tech game plan is just like your oh, yeah. media consumption plan. And Planet Side too, just you know, just in between. Added out. Yeah. 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 That's the cock. Yeah. Oh god. 
Um, yeah, February 5th is XCOM 2. Nice. So we, oh, yeah. We, less than two months. You know, nice. it's really not very far off. And the version I played of it felt like, like, there were bugs here and there. Every time I did something that got me a Steam achievement, it was like, you unlock Steam achievement 47. <laughs> Steam <laughs> achievement expected, text goes right? here, right? Yeah, like, right? So there's still stuff yeah. for them to do. Yeah. Yeah. I encountered a glitch with, like, a grenade, but it was nothing that made me question whether it was ready or not, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, every game two, three months down the line from when it comes out is going to have glitches like that and is going to have oh, problems yeah. like that. So... I think it'll be ready. I'm glad that they delayed it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Make it right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just, I'm just excited. Especially with for the it, mod man. support and everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. That makes just, me so happy. Yeah. The modding support is going to be insane. This game mm-hmm. is just going to live forever. It really, I think people are just going to do incredible things with it. It's yeah. going to be so much easier to just say, okay, this is the model for this enemy that I want to replace with this other model, like. Here right. you go. Boom. It's going to turn into Star Wars quicker than we know. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the only thing on our minds. It's inevitable. So, I know you didn't get to play the multiplayer at all. Did you talk to them at all about the multiplayer? In Is XCOM 2? Yeah, because that's something in XCOM I actually had a lot of fun with. My friend and I would, like, skirmish. It's um, good. And I... it's, it's surprisingly fun. Huh. Um, I mean, I'd imagine it would be. I unfortunately didn't get to, to try that at yeah, all. I didn't yeah. get to talk to them about that at all. Um, I can't imagine it will differ too much. Right, right. Like I was saying, I think if the trend holds from what else I saw in the game, it will just be the same thing, but they will have fixed some annoyances that you didn't right, like right. with it, right? Like, that that's what they just, that's what they did. That's everything I saw from what they did was just, hey, you know what? This wasn't broken. Mm-hmm. Let's just make it better. Yeah. You know, let's just do more. Cool. The classes are way interesting, too. I really like the guy with the sword. Because it means yeah, that you can... Yeah, the sword was badass. Yeah, you can... There's a dude with a sword. Wow. He's a yeah. ranger. And he's like a scout kind of, yeah. you know, okay. you, he, he's, he's got the, the, the run, yeah, his, run and gun kind of thing. His skill tree is is can either go into like a being invisible, sort of. It's not really invisible. It's just like, <laughs> like unde- undetected. Um, oh, that's actually something I didn't even talk about in my video is that there's every mission since you're now the gorillas, right? Right. The plot of the game is that you lost XCOM 1. The plot of the game is not Certainly the did. actual Certainly end of did. XCOM 1. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. how many times do <laughs> you have to restart XCOM 1? So the idea is, <laughs> this is a timeline where one of those failed attempts, like, continued, and That's the great, aliens right. took over the world. So you're actually, like, the freedom fighter guerrilla forces. Hmm. Um, and what that means is that every mission is usually you sneaking up on something or, like, trying to attack a point. So you start the mission in this, like, observer mode where all of the enemies have these ranges of vision where if you step into one of these squares, then they get alerted that you're there. Mm -hmm. But until then, you can just kind of, like, sneak your way up and, like, set up people on Overwatch and then, like, alert them. And the second you alert them, like, everything, like, all hell breaks loose and (laughs) and people are running and your Overwatch guys are shooting them. And it's, it's interesting that there's, like, now a little bit of a stealth element to the beginning of every mission. Not, like, too much, but just enough that it keeps it interesting. That's cool. And this dude with the sword can either kind of get skills that let him go back into that that sneaky mm-hmm. mode, or he can just hit people with a sword. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was, you know, in your gameplay, which I edited, so I've seen it all, um, there's one point where you just, you're kind of pinned down by this one soldier, and you just send your scout just right up in his face yeah. and just cut him in half. Yeah. I mean, it was just like, oh, okay, we dealt with that, great. And the, the problem with that then is that you can, that means you can attack while sprinting, right? Usually mm-hmm. a sprint using two actions to move really far, double the, the distance, right. meant you couldn't attack that turn. But now you can do that where you end with the attack. Right. But mm-hmm. if that person is like in a really not tactically sound place, which they, if you, they've, you're in the open, yeah, yeah you're in yeah. the open. If you're not, yeah. if you don't end next to cover, then you're just like standing there, mm-hmm. which well, is usually death in XCOM. And you've probably just sprinted around behind cover, exactly, in order to, get to the person. So yeah, so yeah, it risky. can it can put you in some weird mm-hmm. positions, but it's yeah. very very cool. I like the, it. the other thing I'm I'm kind of excited about the game is just that they're pushing the sci-fi stuff even further. So like the technology is all a little bit more sci-fi. The aliens you know, are now out in the open and they've got all their technology, kind of like turrets that you can hack and uh, all sorts of stuff. But the coolest thing is your base, your home base, 
isn't underground anymore. Your home base is in a stolen alien transport. <laughs> so instead of like digging down, you know, to get to like the thermal layer underground, you're discovering these like different rooms of this alien ship. Hmm. So and and there's like alien technology in the ship that's your base. So you know, it's the same cutaway view. It's like a you know, a, a ant farm kind of looking thing. Yeah. Um, but you're flying, which is great. Got to say, yeah. uh, I also am, I haven't been paying too much attention to the media uh, around XCOM 2, just because I want to be surprised, but I've seen images of a lot of the new enemies, and they look amazing. They're really pretty, There's right? some really, like, horrifying, creative enemy <laughs> types. Yeah. Uh, like, the first game felt just like, eh, it's vanilla aliens, you know, we just got the big one and the little one, and, yep. uh, uh, you know, uh, but this, this feels... Uh, it's, it, like you said, more sci-fi. There's, they're yeah. really reaching out into like yeah. some pretty weird spaces and they, ideas. It also feels like they found their art style a yeah, little bit more. It looks beautiful. Like, not that the not this is not criticizing <laughs> the first game like for looking bad or anything, no, but, but like it felt very generic science fiction in yeah. the first one, like you were saying. And this one, it feels more like they pushed it in a direction where they like have a little more of their own voice in mm -hmm. the the design of an the colors alien. feel bolder or something. Yeah, it's like harder lines. I don't know what it is, but yeah. it. it uh, and those those viper things, you know those snake yeah. things. Snake people. Yeah, this isn't yeah. spoiling anything. This is just when you find this out really really quick, like in. I, that in. is a spo so. You think I this hate is a my friends? Who, they're like, okay, I'm not going to spoil anything in the movie. You find out in the first ten minutes. I'm like, well then, I, it's spo the first ten minutes are spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to put that out there. Okay. I mean, you could say okay. it if you want to. No, I, okay, I won't. I won't then. The snake people are cool. They're really hard, Spoilers. cool enemies. <laughs> cool. And you. you You'll find something out about them very quickly, insignificantly. <laughs> something very insignificant, sure. But it's cool. It's when, it's, it's when not I was watching and I and I figured it out when I was watching your gameplay. I definitely had like a oh shit. Okay, no, okay. So, then I'll leave it. I'll yeah. leave it. I'll leave it be. <laughs> Um, <laughs> let's move on. Let's actually talk about a little bit about VR again, because we found out last week that Steam's VR, the HTC Vive. Is going to be delayed into April. Isn't and it the uh, the Vive? Vive? Oh, yeah. No. No. The Vive? Vive? No. no, no, it is not. Is I, I actually don't know how yeah. to pronounce so it. So it could be Vive. This is why I said Steam VR yeah. because yeah. it cuts the conversation. Yeah. It cuts that part of the conversation out yeah. of it. Um, it was originally supposed to be like my or like what, what's the word? Limitedly consumer available. In November last yeah. month, yeah. and that kind of came and went, and the Steam <laughs> controller and the Steam Link came out. It's like early access for hardware. Yeah, basically. right. Like, but, yeah, I don't know. I mean, and you can't really like it's it's understandable. This is the first time. All this stuff is the first time that Steam and Valve have ever done anything hardware. Yeah. It's the first time they've ever sold anything physical. So the fact that there are delays and problems with a lot of the things that they're making is not surprising not saying any of it is like bad i've heard incredible things from wes our hardware editor about about the vive mm -hmm. um but vive vive what you know what you know what well get out <laughs> done see if, Un see if we invite you to the, the show <laughs> ever yeah. again yeah tired of this shit no um that, but yeah so now it's now they're saying april and it's funny to me, it's always funny to me when they just, like, someone lets a release window just pass, and then a month later, they're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah that's not coming out till <laughs> April. Like, yeah. They were a little too quiet about it. it was, pretty, uh, I mean, people are people but, are used to Valve being quiet. Yeah, right yeah, that's the thing. It's like, but are we that surprised it's getting delayed? Yeah. And so I, you played you played it on you played that rock climbing game on Oculus Rift, right? Oculus, yeah. yeah. But I'm not I'm not super surprised that it's delayed. No. I just am I sad. I like want yeah. VR to be a thing right now. Yeah. I'm not I'm not too disappointed that it's delayed though. I mean, I'm kind of of the opinion that delays in general aren't a bad thing if it means the product's better. Sure. Yeah, oh yeah. Sometimes that's not the case. You get a crappy product either way and then it's like, well, you made me wait longer for this crap. But <laughs> um so I'm not too sad about it. I bet they just, like, you know, they realize, well, Oculus isn't coming out until next year sometime, which we, we still don't know the release date. Yeah. Exactly. All the day details are so cagey. Yeah, it's yeah. Swamp VR, man. Uh, no one's committing to anything. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so sick of this. It's like Swamp VR. But I bet uh, uh, they were just like, okay, we know, we everyone knows that this is not perfect yet. We don't have the games there yet. Why don't we just... 
Let's hold off. And the games is going to be a big thing, I think. Yeah. yeah. What's available at launch, and, you what's know, been modded to work Valve, at launch. Or, excuse me, uh, Oculus is, I think, doing a better job on the game front, pushing their platform. People are not liking the language they're using around it by saying, like, it's Oculus exclusive. It, do, yeah, it doesn't that's... necessarily mean it's exclusive to the, the hardware. Uh, it's exclusive to the platform, which we still don't know what that is. Which, right. You know, it's a program probably. Or <laughs> I think it's safe to say that outside of the Steam VR development team and Oculus, nobody wants a PC console war, right? Right. Sure. Nobody no. wants Vive or Oculus to be the dominant thing that gets exclusives. We want them to personally, I want them to compete. I want them to push each other yes. in developing stuff. But and in I their technology. All, and their technology. Like and AMD I, versus NVIDIA or something. Exactly. You know? And I don't want that to screw with games, you know? Because right. even AMD and NVIDIA have these, like, drivers first on NVIDIA. Right. And it's so annoying because then it just means that the game doesn't work for AMD users for the first week. And right. it's like, just it doesn't help it's, anybody. It's, it's going to be rocky for a while. Even if, like, Oculus is saying, um, it, it, you know, even if Oculus games do work on the Vive or whatever, right. Valve VR hardware eventually comes out, uh, It it's not going to be day and date for both. There's going to be a lot of uh, yeah. you know tinkering to get stuff working. And then, but in yeah. in Oculus news, they announced that not only are you going to get an Xbox One controller coming with yeah. the Oculus Rift, you'll also get Eve Valkyrie. Yeah, and yeah. that's a game that I don't think is Oculus exclusive. No. I think it'll work on the Vive, yeah. but you will get it for free if you buy a Rift. Which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. You guys played also... it? Yeah, yeah I got to play it at the uh, PC Gaming press conference uh, last E3. Oh, cool. Which I was played super it, fun. Yeah, I played it at PAX a couple years back or so, and it's it's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's a good get. It's a good get. Uh, that's, I mean, like you were describing with the rock climbing where you sort of had this moment of like, oh, wait, I can look around and then yeah. look down. I definitely had that playing Eve Valkyrie where... Um, <laughs> Not Eve, but uh, where you're in this cockpit, it's a space shooter, you know, they're yeah. a lot of fun. You've seen this before. Yeah, like, okay. but then you kind of look to the side, and you're like, oh, I'm flying a little space fighter. <laughs> like, <laughs> look at the wind. Holy hell. Like, and, and suddenly yeah. the, the 3D space of being yeah. in a space fighter just becomes so much more... Uh, so much more apparent, and and it's like okay, yeah. Well, now I'm gonna barrel roll and do this loop, and yeah, it because and and it took me a while to relearn uh, flying a ship because I've played all kinds of you know space sim or uh, flying sims like Tie Fighter and you know Free Space and all that. Yeah. And when you realize you can f direct your ship while looking around to find other ships and orient yourself, it's it's very awkward, and people might be off put by that, but it's something, it's, it's, it's natural. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so I think it's going to be a really, really good get for Oculus well, to this, have that be the first thing a lot of people see. And this is the question is you, you guys, you two having played this game, at least the demo of right. it, do you think it will sell Oculuses? No. No. Like there, because to like me, it to me, like yeah. the bundle, right? Yeah. Like there are there are bundles where somebody is like, oh, I don't really care about a PS4, but I really want to play Destiny, so I'm going to buy the Destiny bundle. You know? Right. Do you think that it'll there will be a similar effect with Oculus, where somebody is like, oh man, I really want to play Eve Valkyrie, and I like the Vive more, but I'm just going to buy it Rift because it comes I, with it. Mm. It'll really depend on how much more content they add to the game. Yeah. It was a very, I mean, the, it was thin. just a demo, but it was pretty thin. It was a really fun uh, space combat, um, but that's all it was. You know, if it was like Star Citizen, and, you know, I know I'm going to get first person combat, and I'm going to get, or, you know, first person shooter combat, and, and all this other stuff, sure, but. Yeah, I mean, you know. it, it's it's a launch. It feels like a launch title to me. I mean, right. we've seen it all with consoles before, uh, where th most of them are just like proof of concept, a little more shallow and uh, not necessarily bad, but just you know they're out there to push an idea or demonstrate something. And um, I think as it is, it's good at that. Yeah. Uh, 
But like you said, is it just going to be, are we going to fly around in this one space battle? Is there going to be right. some kind of like upgrading our ship mechanic? Or are right, we going right. to go different places? What's I need unlocked. Really no one really knows yeah. what Valkyrie is. Right. Maybe we do? Right, know. right. Right. Yeah, um, Andy Kelly was very positive about it, yeah. and when he got a more hands-on, a longer playthrough oh, with okay, it recently. Um, and also, uh, tw- Twitch user, Sc- oh my god, how do I pronounce a Screcker? Hi, uh, Screcker. Points out that actually PC Gamer in March uh, reported that Eve Valkyrie was going to be exclusive on PC or Oculus on. Exclusive on the Oculus on PC at the moment was what they okay. said. So back in March they said it's going to be exclusive for Oculus for now, but we're not ruling other things out. Right. So that's that's like Final Fantasy VII remake. Like first on. It's almost PS4. definitely going to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. And it, I so. think a lot of that is because Oculus is obviously funding a lot of these efforts in some right. way uh, because making a VR game is. An unknown right now, yeah. <laughs> like what kind of financial risk that is. Yes. But I making agree. a space game is like, that's not an unknown at all. Space Sims and like. Oh no, games, sure, like, but I mean, just like how many people are gonna have an Oculus? How many people are gonna, you know, buy them at launch? How many people have? Right. Pe- it's like there's so much up in the air. VR is the weirdest launch thing ever. <laughs> it's gonna be the weirdest. It's gonna yeah. be the weirdest thing ever. It's uh, it's crazy. Yeah. The. I mean, Elite Dangerous's Horizons update, yeah. which also has VR support already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'll um, be cool to see. It's fun. Horizons update launched today, which yeah. is worth bringing up um, because it allows you to land on planets mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then also Star Citizen, which I believe has VR support I'd out of the box. I'd be shocked if it didn't, didn't but too, yeah. there's so many things that... It doesn't have to be added yeah. to, yeah. But they just got their so, 2.0 yeah. release. Right. And for the record, if anybody is wondering, I personally am excited about both of those things, mm-hmm. both the Elite Dangerous Horizons update and the Star Citizen 2.0 update. But I don't play either of those games, and I don't think you guys do either. So unfortunately, we're not really much use of talking about yeah. it today. <laughs> I mean, no. But if, so if Oculus came bundled with Elite Dangerous... That would probably be a sell for me. Okay, so you just think than E Valkyrie yeah. is just like this unknown? Yeah, I worry that it just doesn't have as enough content to be like the I'm gonna buy this, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, personally, I think, and maybe this is like a little later when it doesn't require a, you know a thousand dollar PC or whatever to run VR. Right. I think stuff like the climb and you know in some kind of bundle. Yeah. Um, I don't really know the depth of the climb yet. Uh, uh, what that you know would look you like. You didn't get the crossbow yet, right? No. <laughs> God. <laughs> but uh, it, you know uh, something like that. So maybe E Valkyrie is it's just the, a space battle, and maybe right. uh, the climb is just a couple mountains you run up and down of time trials, and maybe uh, you you know there's just a bundle like Job Simulator or something is in there too. Well, it'll be um, interesting to see how all these games are priced. Yeah, and, I, yeah. Like, because except for um, oh goodness gracious, what's that snowy one that's exclusive for Oculus Rift and everyone's oh, upset? Oh, it's Insomniac. It's, yeah, in, Insomniac's game. Um, Shoot, Plat- they're, or the, yeah. they're doing this 3D puzzle platform, or maybe not puzzle, but they're doing oh, 3D I remember platformer. seeing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me double check what it what is. Called. But it, that's the only game that I've seen so far, at least in advertising. That feels like a more substantial experience yeah. than these other things. Eve Valkyrie might be a larger experience than I'm than any of us are expecting. Yeah, hopefully they'll grow it. But Job Simulator and like this rock climbing game, like you said, they feel much smaller. They mm. and that's not necessarily you know a criticism of. No, just do of, one thing really yeah, well. Yeah, they do one thing really yeah. well. Yeah, and that's like great, but that's also not like a launch lineup. No, <laughs> no, but I mean, I look at something like if you want to do a pack in or you want something that someone who just got their fancy new VR goggles and they're like, okay, how do I show this off to people or how do I, you know, uh, test the uh, uh, capabilities of this thing? I think um, of uh, Wii Sports, what that did for the Wii or uh, even the Wii U, but no one bought the Wii U. Battle Tank, <laughs> Battle Tank 09 in the chat says Edge of Nowhere. That's Edge of Nowhere. Yeah, there that's an Insomniac's Thank kind you. of platformer um, game. But it'd be nice to have something that's packaged that demonstrates you know everything yeah. about the oculus rather than just like so you can just play 
right when you get yeah. it. I mean, that's yeah. the kind of the nice thing. You don't have to be like waiting for a title. But. Well, maybe maybe the launch lineups is gonna are gonna look like a smattering of these little just kind of distraction games, and then games that are already out but have VR support, right? Right. Elite Dangerous is already out right. and already has VR support. Minecraft will have VR support. It already has, like, modded in VR right. support. Right. And it will have official support. Um, so maybe maybe what we're looking for is not these... Not to expect these fleshed out, incredibly large VR experiences to be ready in the next four months, but just a lot of really good, small proof of concepts, and right. then we can expect bigger games once VR has been more adopted. Because it's probably a huge risk for a company to like oh. invest yeah. in an untested technology, really, yeah. They don't, to, yeah. to make yeah. a huge game. That's it's it's, absurd. It's scary. Well, and it reminds me of, um, I can't remember who I was talking to the other day, and they were saying that... Um, you know, Minesweeper and Solitaire were originally bundled with Windows to teach people how to use a mouse. <laughs> you know, it's to huh. teach people how to double click, how to right click, how to, you know, click and drag, stuff like that. So I could see some of these games, you know, kind of teaching people what the VR experience is. You know, this is how you navigate menus with a VR. This is how you, you know, you know, get into these little like Space games or whatever. Yeah, and you, we, and that. we've seen similar things, and this is not PC, I know, but we've seen similar things with every time Nintendo releases a new console with a yeah. gimmick, right? right? You, like you said, you <laughs> have yeah. Wii Sports, and for the record, I love Nintendo, oh. but yeah, ditto. Yeah. They Wii Sports was this little distraction that they released with it. Nintendo Land was a little distraction that right. they released with um, the Wii U. And, and they do serve a purpose. They serve a very, very important purpose. I'm just hoping that VR doesn't go the way of Nintendo where they release these very kind of cool little games to show off their technology and then nobody ever uses their technology right. again you know like every game every worthwhile game for the Wii U from from after launch basically didn't care about the second screen right yeah. uh but you know it's it's the PC which is you know yeah our, it's our it's our uh, it's our love and uh, it's it's people like it because it's an open platform and people yeah will develop, you know, all sorts of crazy stuff for it if the tech, if the hardware is there and if it's supported. So um, I'm more hopeful than I am I've ever been for a Nintendo gimmick for a <laughs> VR. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll I think I think I've said this before on the stream, but there was the saying that I believe Wes told me or somebody told me of there are two types of opinion. There are two opinions when it comes to <laughs> VR, right? And yeah. I've said this before, and I'll say it again because it's a great quote, which is two types of people who uh, opinions of VR, which is somebody who thinks it's going to change the world of gaming and it's going to be this amazing revolutionary thing, and the person who's never tried it, right? <laughs> and, and that's that's the gray area, yeah, right? Like, right. There, there is none. So. I'm excited for it to come, and I just want it to be here, and I'm frustrated that it's delayed to oh, April yeah. again. Because oh, yeah. honestly, if it they would... told me that the Vive was like $800 and it was coming out right now and had like a game come with it, yeah, I way. might buy it. I would right. find a way. I would sell something else, right? <laughs> well, like, I mean, at the very I don't least... need two kidneys. <laughs> sell your Nintendo. Our jobs are going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be a fun year. <laughs> don't joke about <laughs> that, Will. <laughs> It's going to be a good year for us, though. We were going to yeah, have I'm excited work. about that. Yeah. Well, we can move on then. Yeah. Let's talk about Tribes Ascend. Yeah. Which update. Got, it's got its out of the blue update today. Um, which Great is name for an update. Yeah, too. it's a yeah. good name. Although uh, somebody said that it should be named the From the Grave update. Oh. Ouch. Um, for those of you who don't know, Tribes Ascend is made by High Res Studios. We've talked about it before on the show. It's by the folks who made Smite and all that. And it's they didn't create tribes though it was just like this was their next game in a long storied lineup and the old tribes games are very very you know they're stately they they hold a high high place of honor in the pc gaming world and two years ago basically high res abandoned it and they felt really bad and a lot of the community didn't like where tribes was at and they just let the player base die and they felt awful about this and then a couple months ago, they started updating the game again in this, in this public test realm, and they stripped out basically all of the progression in it. They took out all of the, like, unlocking guns. They mm -hmm. took out the—they they reduced it to three classes from nine. Originally what it was, it was right. three weight classes, like light, medium, and heavy, and then 
three classes within those weights, and now it's just all of the equipment and items are available to a specific weight. Right. Um, so you don't have to get pigeonholed into these very, very specific roles anymore. Mm -hmm. um, right, if you want a certain weapon with a certain ability, you can mix and match and do that, which yeah. is kind of cool. And You it, still do have to unlock them, though. Oh, I'm sorry. You, still some of the weapons and stuff you okay. have to unlock. Oh, I was but, wrong about that. Then. I'm sorry. But you can customize... Uh, more specifically. Gotcha. Yeah. And there's also, I believe they did strip out some of the progression. They, yeah. they simplified the progression, I believe, is okay. the, the better way to put it. There. Yeah, I, I mean, from what I was just playing before the stream, um, it's one unlock isn't based on having unlocked something else. You can kind of unlock anything at any point as long as you have the experience to spend. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, so maybe they, they changed it up. They made things, yeah. basically they made it less like like a game, like they made the unlocking less gamey, right? They right made up. it easier to unlock what you wanted to unlock. Yeah. Good. Um, I think it's awesome. I'm really excited to dive back into tribes. So one of the first yeah. things I want to lead with is I was, I was looking at the Steam chart numbers for mm -hmm. it. Uh, if anybody doesn't know what Steam chart is, it just tracks how many people are playing a game at a current time. And basically like 100 people is the peak that tribes has gotten for the last two years mm -hmm. like every day at peak hours it'll be about like 116 people playing the game right. and then it'll dip down like 50 on off hours and that's kind of all the people there was it had a very 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 dedicated incredibly small player base right mm -hmm. um just to give you an idea of how small that is comparatively evolve <laughs> which we've talked about being having basically no community and not many people are playing it and nobody really cared about it for a very long time, usually hovers around like three to 600 people. So right. that's how much, it's smaller than that. And we already considered that like nobody was playing it. Um, since they updated the game a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. it jumped up to about 500 peak. Nice. And it's okay. kind of starting to dwindle. It's only been like a couple of days since mm -hmm. the peak was hit, and now it's starting to go back down. My first question is, is there hope? Like, is there hope for this game to get a community back around so, it that's bigger than a couple hundred? It has a couple things going for it. Um, one is, you know, it's it's a game that's been out for a while now. I mean, obviously, it's got the update, but it's a little bit older. So your system requirements are not very taxing. Mm -hmm. um, also, the file size is very small, and it's free to play. <laughs> but, you know, I just I just downloaded it uh, this morning to kind of, like, brush up before the stream. And, I mean, you know, we've got a nice connection here, but it downloaded really quickly. You know, it was just a couple gigabytes and that I was in. Um, that's really appealing. Um, also, super easy to get into just, like, a match. It just throws you into a match um, super fast. There weren't, like, you know, a ton of loading screens or anything like that. It was just, like, you know, multiplayer, join, team deathmatch, and then, like, a few seconds later I was playing. Mm -hmm. So a so super low barrier are, to entry. Yeah, yeah. So and the, that's attractive. It's got really... I mean, there's a reason that Tribes is, is a loved series. It's mm -hmm. got really unique combat because oh, yeah. for anybody who doesn't know the tribe series like you're skiing is what it's called <laughs> right yeah like that's that's what they call it and you have a jet pack and then basically like you can just go no friction on any sort of surface or slope and all the maps are huge and they're like mountainous they have all these bumps and hills so the yeah. whole like deal of how you're supposed to move in the game is slide down a mountain and then as you slide up the other one the other end of it like jet pack up and you're just suddenly like gliding through the air uncontrollably yeah. to a degree but the best players can get going so fast mm -hmm. and a lot of the weapons and abilities well not a lot some of them are based on like damage based on how fast you're going or like energy regen based on how fast you're going and stuff like that so they kind of play with that and most of them are not hit scan weapons for the yeah. hit scan for those of you who don't know is like a machine gun in call of duty or soldier 76 in overwatch if you have been paying attention to that is a hit scan gun where it's like you point at it 
and when you click the mouse, the bullet basically hits wherever you're pointing. Yeah, it's like instant instant bullet time. Yeah. And there's there are a couple guns like that in the game, but they're you know it's like a sniper rifle or something. It doesn't do a ton of damage. Yeah, as um, opposed to a rocket launcher where you can see the projectile yeah. going through the air and then it hits. And like the what what so the spin so, fuser is like yeah. the classic tribes gun, which I played a lot of Star Star Siege tribes the original, and it was called the disc launcher back then. <laughs> but yeah, it's just this very slow projectile, um, and so you're leaping through the air and your opponent's leaping through the air, and you're trying to figure out where they're going to land and hit your disc right where they land. And that's like, that's kind of the default weapon almost. It's like, given to all the classes, you know, there's a light version and a heavy version, um, which affects the damage and stuff. But but this sort of that's the assumption that that's the weapon you're going to use, is this kind of like massive damage, really slow and so disc the, launcher. Yeah, and but. so the skill of the game becomes like, how fast can you be sliding while also yeah. predicting where they're going to be sliding, like three seconds ahead of when you fire the gun? And oh yeah, it can make for these. It's incredibly kind of hard to to pick up initially, but it can just make for these amazing moments. Oh yeah, I'm just glad that High Res is supporting it again. Super cool. Yeah. And if you're if you're at all interested in it, even like. You know, passingly, just like, what is this? Like Will said, it's free to play, it's got low system requirements, and it is small. So yeah. just try it, I guess, is what I want to say. And I mean, this is very, like, I, I know this sounds very, like, pitchy from me, but, like, yeah. genuinely, I just want to see a community around Tribes again. I loved the Tribes series. I liked Tribes Ascend even when it was supposed to be bad back in the day, like three or four <laughs> years right. ago. Um, and I just I, I want to see it. I want to see it succeed again because high res has already said they're not planning on making any money off of this game. Like it's right, costing just, them money to yeah. work on it and they know they're not going to get profitable from it. So I want to see it just like have a player base again. Like that's all I want for it. And I kind of feel like that's why they did the update is they were like, man, we kind of had this game that we've been sitting on. Some people are still kind of into it. Let's just give them this, you know, even if even if that's it. Like, I wonder if they're going to keep updating it after this. They right? have, like, when I talked to them at TwitchCon, which is a couple months ago, they said that they have about four to five people dedicated to tribes now. Wow. And, you know, in a studio like Hi Res, where they have hundreds of people working on Smite, that's not, like, that's a minuscule team. Right. But it is people in the studio who their job is to develop that game. Even if it's that's not many, cool. it's... They have they are devoting consistent resources to it. So they're not like here we made it a little better. The updates <laughs> out. Do your thing. Yeah, no, they're, they're done. They're not stepping yeah. away from it yet. Like the That's development cool. is probably going to be very very slow on it. But they're yeah. not s just walking away now that they've done the update. Yeah. Um, yeah, if if it's not your type of game, that's fine. Like I'm, I don't mean to sound reverendy here or anything, yeah. but like, I just I'm very excited that the game is getting updates, and I'm very excited that the tribes. Like legacy is not gonna get like diminished like it was. Mm -hmm. That's just my two cents for the day. Yeah. <laughs> that was a very like impassioned speech I yeah. just gave. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no, don't. Be so the the other thing that when I was playing tribes earlier, um, it kept remi reminding me of is uh, recently I started playing Rats Instagib, mm. um, which of course is a, you know, a hit scan weapon. You're you're a bunch of rats in a room. As the name um, would apply. <laughs> yeah. With with just this laser gun that instantly hits whatever you're aiming at. And that's the only weapon. There's nothing else, but it's similarly, you know, a tiny player base and everybody is like leaping around like maniacs <laughs> just trying to hit each other and that's kind of what it felt like in a good way. Um, just with a very different weapon style. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's another very tiny game that's not free to play, I don't think. Rats? Um, no, yeah, it's, not. it's not. But it's also a very, very good shooter yeah. with a very small, like, dedicated yeah. community. So Which, yeah, now that you've played fun. Tribes, yeah. is this is it going to replace Planetside 2? Well, <laughs> nothing could ever replace Planetside 2. Um, <laughs> you did that thing. So yeah. tell, tell us about the time that, I think I might have mentioned this on stream before, actually, of that you did the uh, the Treasure Goblin oh, in yeah. Planetside. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, so I've been really into Blizzard games my whole life. Um, 
recently, though, is what I was going to say. Um, so, you know, I was playing Here's the Storm, and they had a Treasure Goblin, like, event going on where um, the Nexus was, you know, invaded by a bunch of Treasure Goblins. So at the start of every match, a little Treasure Goblin would appear, and all the players would kind of, like, hunt it down before the match actually started, and you'd get some, like, bonus gold or whatever. Um, and, of course, Treasure Goblins come from Diablo 3, which is what all this was about. Um, and uh, in Diablo 3, if you get the Treasure Goblin, you get uh, some sick loot um, and gold and all that. So I created a character in Planet Side 2 called Treasure Goblin um, and just ran around with a Stalker Cloak, which is a, um, a, a regenerating cloak that doesn't let you use your main guns. You can only use a pistol. Um, and if you hold still, your cloak regenerates. So you never have to uncloak. And so that's, just, that's invisibility cloak. That's invisibility cloak, yes. Yeah. Um, so just run around. Uh, one of our old employees works for Daybreak, Daybreak Games um, and gave me a bunch of uh, codes for a, like a you know special edition weapon. So I would just run around typing in ch- into the... like area chat, you know, little treasure goblin-y things, like he, he, he. <laughs> things like that. I'd just run around for, you know, like, five minutes at a battle, and if somebody got me, I'd send them a code. Um, <laughs> and if not, I'd be like, oh, I got away, and, like, respawn in a different battle and start, start my, like, That's woohoos great. again. Um, yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's just so if you ever see that on there, lovely. kill me, because I'll give you a code. I just love but, random acts of, of free stuff like that. Yeah, though. yeah. It's always nice. Yeah, super fun. Um, I'd be interested <laughs> to see the the player numbers on on Planet Side actually, because mm. we can't look that up in Steam charts. So, right. but I'd be interested to see what the numbers like the player base of a game like that compared to like other shooters is, because I feel like it has a pretty dedicated community. Yeah. But that game is also like not really trying to impress anyone right now. If that makes sense, it yeah, just like I mean, exists and is doing its thing. They're definitely doing updates. Um, They've had this big update that they're they've been planning for a while, where they're going to add um, constructibles to the game, like basically buildable bases. Whoa. Um, I'm not sure where they are with that. Uh, I know it's not anytime soon that that would be coming, but um, so they're definitely adding new content. They added a um, a sniper rifle for the engineer class recently that does really high damage to. Um, one of the heavily armored units, which is called mm. a Max. So it's like a, a mech suit. Um, and they're just a pain in the butt, so they added in this gun to kind of help people sort of mitigate uh, the Max crashes, is what we call them. <laughs> everybody pulls a Max and just swarms a base. Um, I feel like this is what you feel like, James, every time <laughs> yeah. me and Tim talk about Hearthstone. Hearthstone yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, glaze over. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. But, uh, yeah, so, so they're adding they're, com- content. Yeah, they're um, updating. They're doing a big Christmas sale right now uh, with, like, exclusive armors and stuff every day. Camos, gotcha. So. I love holiday sales. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, super fun. fun. Well, speaking of holiday things, we can move on. <laughs> yeah, to, that was a good uh, transition. I'm, nice. I am yeah. a professional. Done. I get yeah. paid to do this. That's true, okay, well, actually. The CSGO Counter-Strike source. Uh-oh. No. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, I'm a professional. No now controversy. I'm just stumbling over my words. <laughs> Counter-Strike Global Offensive got a new holiday patch recently, mm. and the world caught on fire. Yep. Yeah. Reasonably uh, so. The the most important part of the patch, the biggest thing that everyone was talking about, of course, was that the chickens in the game. <laughs> Get out of here. Come on. The chickens in the game all got little holiday jumpers. That's uh, so great. They so got, not what I expected you to say. They all got little <laughs> ugly Christmas sweaters and because there's just chickens everywhere in the CSGO world, apparently. And yeah. they're all over all the maps, and those chickens are all now little, in little adorable red sweaters. And it's amazing. It's and that's good. the best part of the game. I think it's I think kind of game-breaking, makes, though, because now your eye goes yeah. to this red... Uh, Sweaters chicken broken. sweater where you think it's like like a, a blood splat or something, but it's just a chicken, and you think that there's someone there, and there's not. It's I've totally game-breaking. I've been noticing that, actually, too, on streams is, like, 
I, I'll, I'll, somebody will turn a corner when I'm watching them stream, and like out of the corner of my eye, I'll just see like a flash of red, and they'll be like, "What? In, oh, it's a chicken. It's a chicken. Never with mind. A sweater. <laughs> yeah. um, no, the the really big thing that these guys were expecting me to say was the R8 pistol, mm, um, yep. the R8 revolver. Excuse me. Was, they added a gun to the game called the R8. It's a a, a revolver kind of like uh, like six shooter, but I think it has eight bullets in it. And when they released this gun, it was probably the most overpowered thing to be added to this game ever and yeah. maybe any game ever. It was yeah. as strong as the op sniper sniper rifle, so meaning it was if you were in range, which is like a medium, short to medium range for the gun, um, it was a one-shot kill on any person anywhere on their body, right. not even head. You just could look at them and tap the button and kill them. And even if they were wearing armor, it would kill right, them. Right, because it's armor piercing. Yeah, yeah the catch the was problem. it shoots slower, but not slower. Yeah, the, yeah. the catch is that you have to click, and you kind of cock the gun, mm -hmm. and then fire it. But it didn't matter, because, like, they wouldn't be able to kill you in the time that it took mm -hmm. them right. to for you to, like, cock that gun. And it was so overpowered that it got nerfed within, like, Three days, I think. Yeah, three I think days three after day. the patch, it's it was still just like, a problem. From what I hear, though. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah it's not entirely th there yet. Because uh, the nerf was they basically made the cocking time longer. Longer. So the time between little less when damage. you shoot and when the bullet actually leaves the gun. I think it also does a yeah. little less damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just a little bit. Uh, um, and and so like, it, I j it's just amazing to me that that Valve could so quickly realize that the excuse me, realize that they screwed up and not realize that beforehand. Mm. <laughs> there was a theory, actually, yeah. that I saw a couple people saying that they think that Valve, because this is literally the third time that they've added a pistol to the game that's been completely broken, overpowered on launch and then been nerfed later. Mm. The other ones took a little bit more time to nerf, but it, it's still the third time this has happened. And somebody came up with a theory that Valve intentionally releases guns overpowered because the Counter Strike's community is kind of known for being very, very resistant to change. They don't like new things, <laughs> right? So what they do is they release a gun that is so strong, they have to use it. They have to try the gun because it is just absurdly broken and you will lose the game if you don't. And then everyone like kind of starts understanding what this gun is and then they bring its numbers back into line with what they actually like wanted them to right, be in the first right. place. It's like tricking people to like, Use it, hate it, get outraged, and then they're happy with the <laughs> fixed version. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like Actually, that we too. do that to you guys sometimes when what? we're editing your videos. <laughs> we'll, we'll put in like one thing that's like obviously wrong in the video. Um, I'm our camera guys yelling at me right now <laughs> behind the camera. Like, Don't tell them. So put in one thing that's obviously wrong. So then you'll see that tell us to fix that. We've already fixed it. We've already got a version ready with it fixed. And then we just, they're like, oh, yeah, here, here, here. Here's the uh, the approved version. Um, no, we, we don't do that. But it, that is a, a he technique quickly for, covers. for uh, dealing with dealing with um, touchy clients. Right. Mm. Well, maybe they did that. Maybe yeah. they didn't. Yeah. Regardless, they realized that the theory. gun was broken pretty quick. There were some other changes in that update, too, like, they changed spray patterns or they spray spray mm -hmm. like randomness. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are complaining and I love that for so long people have been whining about RNG and Hearthstone Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying real quickly on a side note, I'm making a very concerted effort and I hope everyone appreciates this to say Hearthstone from now on instead of Hearthstone. <laughs> because the yeah. amount of hate I've gotten Hearth. for saying Hearth is Hearth. just absurd. So people have been complaining in Hearthstone for so long about RNG. <laughs> it just feels wrong. Anyway. About RNG Feed and like, day. oh, the game is just the game is just <laughs> randomness. Go. James, you just want to <laughs> run. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now people are complaining about RNG in like a game like Counter Strike, which right. to me is just like the epitome of skill is mm -hmm. Counter Strike. Right. So it's That's so funny. funny. I feel like at a certain point people just like to to whine. Yeah. But not not saying that they're not their grievances are not founded, but right. I, the internet likes to complain to a certain degree. We'll see how these changes pan, pan out. Maybe they do need to get reverted. A lot of people are not happy with them. I mean, I think it changes the emphasis on on some of the gameplay a little bit. I mean, you know, a number of the, the rifles got um, basically nerfed where um, the time it takes for your inaccuracy 
to go away. Like, you know, if you've had a couple shots, mm-hmm. you know, your inaccuracy goes up the long, the more you shoot. So the amount of time that takes to decay back to normal is now increased on a couple guns, um, which puts a lot more emphasis on your first shot, um, but also devalues range a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I think that that could be a shift. Um, and then, of course, you know, with the with the R8 revolver, since it's like one shot, and then you've got this long time before your gun resets to take your second shot, even which will also take a long time to leave the chamber. Um, there's a lot of emphasis on that one shot. So I think it's it's promoting accuracy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's also maybe trying to get people to try different tactics, like. I don't know. And there's there's nothing, yeah. like, to a certain degree, like I said before, the Counter-Strike community is very resistant to change, but there's nothing right. wrong, in my eyes, with a game being patched just for the sake of shaking up the meta. Like, League of Legends, every season they change the jungle, right? And And it's not like the last jungle wasn't, you know, maybe they wanted to fix this and that, but they don't need to just change the jungle. And this season with League of Legends, they're changing almost all of how the AD carries and the marksmen's work, and it's it's just to, to shake things up. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's sports experience the same thing. It's not like they're static. Their rules change yearly, all the, the time. It's, uh, it, yeah. Something uh, Wids TV in the chat brings up that CSGO doesn't run any kind of beta or test client in the way that Dota 2 does, which I do agree is kind of a, a crappy thing <laughs> that they yeah. don't that they don't introduce these because the idea the the excuse before was that CSGO wasn't big enough to require a beta client, and I think it's absolutely big enough now. It's yeah, big. <laughs> and, people, and people like to be able to like jump onto like a public test yeah, server different. and like and there was this huge tournament know. too that was happening literally like four days after they patched the game and all of the players for the CSGO tournament were already at the tournament. They had to fly there. So (laughs) the ESL was like, we're not going to be using this new patch. They haven't had any time to practice on it. We're not going to give them three days to Mm. learn this new patch while they're jet lagged before a major tournament. And so they just didn't use that patch for the tournament and for... In a weird way, they released this patch, and the pro scene just, like, stalled for a week because they yeah. had to. Like, what were they going to do, you know? Pretty disruptive. Um, I mean, like, that is kind of fun, though. Like, you guys are all great at this game. You know, now we're going to change something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How how well do you do when we throw this in there? You know? Heart, <laughs> Hearthstone yeah. did a similar thing with Patron. They nerfed Warsong Commander right, right before, before the World yeah. Championships. Yeah. It's it's a thing. And so here's a, here's a question I asked before the stream to you guys, and I yeah. want to talk about it now. How much, and this is a weird question, so I know it's a weird question, but how much does a game developer, like, have the right to fundamentally change their game? And to me, that's a weird question because also, like, they, of course, have the right to, but the game developer is the one making the game. They're the one who decides what they want to do. If they want to add this gun that nobody understands why they would put it in the game, then they have every right to do so. It's their game. But at the same time, the people who are competing, the people who are streaming it, the people who are running the tournaments are not the developer. They're the ones who are responsible to a certain degree for the overwhelming success of the game as an esport and thus the game as a whole. So... How much does Valve personally owe to the community to just not screw with them? And how much are they allowed to just kind of do their thing? I don't know. They're allowed to do their thing. It's, it's, their, it's their game, and sure, they're supported by these people. But I think the reason the game is a success is because they, you know, uh, Valve didn't make Counter-Strike themselves initially, but, you know, uh, they've nurtured it into something uh, good and uh, that has staying power. And, you know, they're very, very smart and should be trusted to, uh, you know, experiment with the game to an extent. Right. But, you know, it would be really silly to just ignore uh, their community's response outright. Um, Which they didn't. They passed. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. um, Though a lot of people say not enough, but sure, right. yeah, it's it's just to what degree it's that's kind of a weird amorphous uh, uh, space. I, I think it it's I I worry about communities being 
uh, overly toxic and holding the developer hostage in a way mm -hmm. over changes um, because maybe they don't understand, you know, these Valve is, they are very, very, very smart developers right. doing this stuff and their data uh, crunching is, is just, it's bonkers. No one, no one really does it like them. Um, so, I don't know. I think up front, Valve should just be able to do what they want. Developers should be able to do what they want. Um, communities, just just be nice, be patient. <laughs> These things like games are very difficult to balance and do perfectly the first time. It's expected that they're going to be a mess with these kind of things. And Will, you were shaking your head yeah. there. <laughs> so, I mean, I, you know, I've I have complex feelings on this, but at the end of the day, games like this, like, you know, CSGO, uh, like Planet Side, you know, even like um, Tribes, the the player base, the community is the content of the game. You know, I, like Hearthstone, yeah, it's competitive, but you know, you've got all these cards, all this stuff. But like with something like CS:GO, I mean, it's the players that make it interesting. It's you know, the strategies and and. The skill shots and knowing A and B and, you know, when to go to the bomb, uh, you know, all this stuff, like, as a team and as a community, that stuff develops, and that's, that's what's really interesting. Um, and so alienating your players by, you know, throwing something crazy in there, I think, isn't necessarily a good thing, because if you start losing players, you, when the players are your game, that's a problem. Sure. That being said, the 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 big issue um, with these updates and you know with their three day later nerf and stuff <laughs> is uh, the 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 whole problem with having a community with a small vocal minority who are going to whine and whine and whine and and get something nerfed or get mm -hmm. something changed just because a couple people don't like it. You know, and and they don't necessarily reflect the rest of the yeah. community's opinion, and that's really the issue. Mm. Um, well, that's the scary know. thing with with all games that do changes like that that the community disagrees with is it's almost impossible for a developer to see how many people are actually talking, right? <laughs> like. Yeah. There's always going to be the, or to an extent, there's going to be the same number of people screaming on the internet no matter what oh, yeah. you do and no matter <laughs> what percentage of the whole they represent. Mm. So in this case, the CSGO community could as a whole be completely outraged with the patch right. or it could be 1% of them outraged at the patch. But either way, the subreddit is in flames and that's all that <laughs> Valve can see. Right. You know? What they should do is they should put... I mean, you know, they're programmers, for God's sakes. In, you know, in your map loading screen or whatever, in your matchmaking screen, a little window pops up with a little, just like a little checkbox. Do you like this? Check. Done. Yeah. There. And done. Battle Tanks 9 asks, what happens when the community is massively outraged, though, a clear majority? Does the dev need to go back? And the answer to that, in my opinion, is they don't need to go back. They don't need to do anything. But if you've massively outraged your community, I think you've screwed up somewhere right. else down the line, right? <laughs> yeah. It's it's you've you've made a mistake that you shouldn't have made essentially. And so either you need to accept that and adjust or you need to say, you know what, no, we're going in a different direction than the majority of our player base. And if some of our player base leaves, then we have to be okay with that. Like if if a developer consciously says the majority of our player base does not like this, and we're okay with that. And if they leave, then we're okay with that. Then I, they can do whatever they want. It's just they have to be conscious of the fact that that's happening. Right. And if they're not conscious of the fact that that's happening, then they'll kill their game. Right, especially if it's, like we're saying, like uh, uh, like I'm saying, a game where the players are the content. Um, but uh, that's interesting, too. I mean... What, what you just said made me think of um, Facebook updates, you know? Like, every time Facebook has had an update in the last 10 years, <laughs> yeah. people are outraged, and they're like, Lose this is the mind. worst thing. I mean, and then within, like, two weeks, they're using it, and they're happy. And then the next time there's an update, everybody's like, what is this? But they've gotten used to what 
the changes were from the last time. So I don't know. But at the end of the day, this whole market is it's a it's a consumer based market. You know, I mean, it, in theory, your players and their money, you know, speak to their opinions. If people stop playing the game, then you know. Um, so I, I think that developers are sort of beholden to their players. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's I, – I agree and disagree. I think it's a very complex, <laughs> yeah. uh, complex yeah. problem because um, I totally agree with what James is saying too about, you know, I don't ever want a developer to feel like they can't do something they want to do. You know, like if a developer says, oh, this is something I'm really passionate, like we're really passionate about and we really want to add this to our game and we think it'll be great. I don't want them to feel like our community is going to eat us alive. We can't do this because that just staggers creativity and it staggers progress and it staggers development in a way that you don't want to stagger. Um, But let's open it up, too, because there are lots of good things being said in the chat. Cool, yeah. Let's open up to our Twitch chat Q&A portion of the show. If you have any questions for us, use the tag at PCGamer in the Twitch chat, and we will be able to see your questions and read your questions. It doesn't have to be about CSGO. It doesn't have to be about competitive patches or anything like that. You can just... Let us know what you want to do. I'm going to plug in my computer. So <laughs> it so it should probably, because it yeah. just said 10%, so that we can <laughs> actually read the questions. And um, I'll if, only take questions about Planet Side 2, so uh-huh. I'm just, no. Seriously, anything, <laughs> anything on your mind in PC gaming that you have questions about, please let us know. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube or listening on iTunes or the website or PodTrack or anything like that, uh, then please come and join us, twitch.tv slash PCGamer, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific time, and we will be able to answer your questions here live for you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. get, also, a, get real, them answered. Real quick shout-out, I did want to say this. We have been starting to use PodTrack, which is a free podcast tracking kind of stat service, um, and I do want to give them a shout-out just for saying thank you because it is free and available, and if you're doing a podcast, please check out PodTrack, spelt with a C, not with a C-K. Uh, Let's see if we have any questions. V890 asks, PC Gamer, why do you you think the latest Tomb Raider game seems to have sold so badly, and what does this mean for PC release? Oh, it's obvious. (laughs) I mean, it's obvious. Opinions. It came out, I don't know, was it day and date with Fallout 4? Yep. And (laughs) it was on the Xbox One, which is... Exclusively. It's not like... It's not like no one has an Xbox One, but it's kind of in the, in the console war, so to speak. It's uh, between PlayStation 4 and it. It's not doing as hot. Um, so it kind of, it got buried, I think. Do you yeah. think that's part of why it's coming to PC or potentially coming to PC so quickly? Because it, there was the, the rumor, right, the idea that it's going to come out like January 29th on PC, which is literally months before I would have expected it to come out. Right. Uh, pr- I'm not that surprised because I think it they had a year exclusivity deal for consoles, if I'm not mistaken. Has it? Okay. No, which means like it can't um, come out on PlayStation Four until like ne- this next holiday. Next wow! Holiday, yeah. Right. Um, the, the PC is excluded from that, uh, so uh, I don't know. It gives them an opportunity to market it now and then later. Uh, hopefully, so they can get kind of two punches in, so to speak. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not that surprised. The first game, uh, if it's running on the same engine, which I think it is, uh, mm-hmm. it ran pretty dang well on PC. So um, it's not like they had a, you know, too much work to do there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. Could be cool. Could be I cool. yeah, I think the Fallout Four thing is. Is really hard because there's a. It's so hard. I mean, they're very different Suicide games, but there's still a similar vibe. You they're, know, they're so they're very different games, but what yeah. they are is they fill the same experience. They are a epic single player, mm-hmm. big journey kind of game, right? Yeah. So when you think, oh man, I just want to sit down with a single player game, Fallout Four, The Witcher, Metal Gear Solid, uh, Tomb Age. Raider, Dragon yeah. Age—they all fall into yeah. that category. Whether right. they're they're very different games play style and like theme wise but you're not going to ask someone to play fallout 4 and tomb raider in the same week right you know you just can't right it's it's a it's a commitment of energy you know just yeah uh but people really really like the game games radar gave it 4.5 out of 5 nice so supposed to be pretty dang good their actual 
uh, a lot more tunes in this one, I hear. Nice. Yeah, that's what I've heard, too. So. It's a little bit more of a throwback in terms of, like, the actual rating of cool. the tunes. So. Kai yeah. Phoenix asks, I'm looking for a new monitor for general PC gaming and PS4 usage. We won't mm. hold that against you. Best bang for buck for 200 to $250 range. What do we need to look for in a monitor these days? So I'm not going to give any, like, specific monitor examples because I don't know monitors that well. <laughs> um, but what I will say is, first... Don't be afraid to look for factory refurbished monitors. Um, a lot of the time you can get cheaper monitors than you would expect. My monitor was $100, and yeah. it should have been like $300, nice. um, and it's an IPS, 24-inch, 1080. The things I would say is if you're going for a 27-inch monitor, make sure it's 1440. If you're going for a 1080 monitor make sure it's 24 inches or lower yeah. um if you go 27 inch 1080 it looks kind of crappy the the pixel ratio kind of starts getting it, it just it doesn't look 24 inches is the sweet spot for yeah. 1080p monitors yeah, yeah. um what i would say is mm, try to get an ips monitor or a pls i think is sony version of that basically pls is one brand version of ips it's slightly better um ips for those of you who don't know is basically like it's called in plane switching it's a way of the monitor produces color um and produces the v image you see hmm. and it's significantly better color um balance and true like it it's more true to the colors that you would see mm -hmm. that you expect to see basically nice. um so look for an IPS monitor, but also look for a low latency IPS monitor yeah. because the problem with IPS monitors originally, and this is a problem that's very quickly going away, is that if you went IPS, it wasn't good for gaming because it was a higher latency. You, you kind of didn't see, uh, you, you get a little bit of a mouse drag and sort of right. things. But now you can get anything under like five millisecond IPS or latency on an IPS monitor is like fine. You won't even notice that. So look for IPS. Look yeah. for 1080 24 is kind of the best range. Mine was like I said, 1080 24 monitor IPS, and I'm very happy with it. And it's was a hundred dollars refurbished. We have a guide yes. as well. Yes, we yeah, do. I site. linked it in the chat. Nice. If you look for PC gamer, if you just Google PC gamer best monitors, best gaming monitors, we have a whole guide on on yeah. that and budget ideas and sort of things. Like I said, our, our budget option is actually, I think, a 1080 IPS, 24-inch, nice. like, and it's it's like $150 yeah. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's when I bought another, it. Yeah. yeah, another good thing to do with monitors, um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying from Best Buy, um, but actually going physically to yeah. a Best Buy <laughs> or a store like CDM. that if you're in the look US. at the monitors. If you're in the U.S., yeah. you know, um, or whatever big computer store. So you can actually look at the monitor before you buy it. Good, yeah. Then go home and get it off New Egg or whatever refurbished. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. using using the physical store as sort of a resource. Um, there's also a good thing. We do a deals post. If you look up every Monday, PC Gamer has, like, best PC gaming deals. I try to grab monitors in that. And then also if you want a more minute-to-minute -minute kind of update, there is a great subreddit. If you go to reddit.com slash r slash build a PC sales, it's Whoa. a very, very kind of active community that gathers sales. You can sort by component type, and they, they make sure that you're not getting kind of screwed over with your sales because, like I said before in our Black Friday mm -hmm. episode, there's a lot of times Amazon will say, this thing is 50% off, and right. really and then it's, you look at, it's yeah. never 50% yeah. off. It's just yeah. that it's like that much money normally. Right, um, right. It's actually, what is the it, The price Sears? matching is, is hilarious. Yeah. There's, there's one there's one Kohl's or Sears or one department store does a similar thing where they always have like a four times markup on all their goods, yeah. but then everything's 50% off. <laughs> um, I don't, don't quote me on that. I don't want to get like libeled or anything like I'm that. I'm but... really excited to check out the subreddit. Um, that's super exciting, and I wish I'd known about that when I build my, built my computer. <laughs> yeah, but it's, you know, it's yeah. very good. Um, let's take a couple quick ones because we are running out of time. Um, any opinions? Battletank09 asks, any opinions on timed exclusives? They're better than full exclusives. <laughs> yeah. I don't like any type Still of exclusive. Still bad, but, but yeah. they I, make sense. I like it more than not being able to play a game ever. Much better yeah. option, yeah. Uh, Red and, Dead. And, you know, if, if something comes out on a different system first, 
it gives you time to like see what people actually feel about yeah. the game. Might like be sometimes for you. you're like, yeah, <laughs> you're like, great. I had to wait a year, and everybody says this sucks anyway. So glad I dodged Save that bullet. But that's still, I'd rather not have pre order games. Guys. Yeah. And last, I pre ordered uh, Overwatch just the other day. I oh. have to admit, that's a safe I went for bet the, for you guys at least. I would imagine. I mean, yeah, I having know. having just played Overwatch uh. consistently. <laughs> Yeah, you're just a fan. It's gonna happen anyway, uh, so I, you guys accepted the. Did inevitable. you see that? I was like, oh yeah, you know, I've already played it, so I guess it's fine if I pre order. And Will's yeah. just like, oh Blizzard, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just really want to get Tracer in Heroes of the Storm when that comes out. So that's gonna be exciting. Um, uh, yeah. let, we'll finish it up with a, a question for Will. Converter Felix asks, Planet Side, yes. which faction is worst in the way of repeating annoying tactics such as Terran Prowler Zergs? Hmm. So, uh, my main my main is NC. Um, Prowler Zergs are really annoying, but so are. F- I play on Connery server, and there's there's a lot of uh, what we like to call scythe balls. Um, the scythe is an empire specific fighter. Hmm. Uh, that you know, I mean, all the empire specific fighters are pretty similar. It's a it's an air plane. Um, <laughs> but on freaking Connery, like every once in a while, you'll just get this group of like twenty really experienced air fighters mm. who just come into whatever base and just destroy you, and and that could be fine. It's fun. You, there are ways to deal with it. You know, it's all about tactics and response and stuff like that. But Jesus Christ, when they come into an already <laughs> overpopped base, like the other team has way more pop than you, and they just start. Just like laying down all this fire, it's like, what are you guys doing? Like, are you having fun? I'm not having fun. <laughs> but um, so, so that's my biggest gripe yeah. uh, in terms of the uh, sort of just annoyance. Why? But. Why does the amount of soda they have relevant to? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> ah, okay. no, nobody calls it pop. No, people do. The East Coast yeah. does. No, I'm down. from the East Coast. Maybe the South calls it pop. Uh, well, I don't know. Nah, back up north yeah. is pop. There you go. Yeah, it's, I guess someone it's calls it pop. Mid north. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Who. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, thank- also max crashes when you don't need a max crash. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> like, going. A nice balance. <laughs> Let it battle. out, Will. Let it out. <laughs> You've never had a yeah. forum like this. Yeah, just, to just, just about just, planet yeah. side. There's only so it. much you can yell in the chat. Uh, what I yeah. thank you everyone for watching. We will be back next week. So mm-hmm. next Tuesday will be our last show of 2015. We will be back Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific time at pcgamer or twitch.tv slash pcgamer, one of those places. Um, so please join us. We will be talking all of the questions that you had in chat about what our game of the year is, what we look forward to for next year. We're going to be having a lovely thing, and we will also have an end of the year kind of PC Gamer recap cat fantastic that I'm planning. Um, so that'll be fun, I think. <laughs> it'll be I'm, fun for be. you it's gonna for be sure it's gonna be a blast for yeah. me whether you guys have fun is totally you know up to you but i hope to see you there once again tuesday 1 p.m pacific time twitch.tv slash pc gamer and we will see you until then and for now uh oh i got cut off thanks very much guys Bye. thank you <laughs> oh we're back <laughs> <laughs> once again uh, now we'll actually do an outro. My name is Tom Marks. I've been here with James Davenport and our very special guest, Will Chesney. Thank you very much, and we'll, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.